Today, we're at a theme park to help solve your medical mysteries. If you're anxious about an ailment or curious about a condition, then the Alchmobile is the place for you. That's brilliant, look at that. Zand is preparing the clinic, ready for his patients. And later, he'll be out in the park to answer your burning questions. At the clinic, he's open for business. Can I have the next patient? First in is 11-year-old Jay, with a question about a fascinating feature on his feet. So, Jay, what's brought you to the Alchmobile today? I've got a very annoying thing on my feet. Both of my big toes are bent. What's the diagnosis, Doc? This sounds like a case of I've got a very annoying problem with my feet and both my big toes are bent-itis. That's exactly what I'd say. Wow, you have really bendy big toes. So what Jay's got is actually very unusual. This joint is where your toes are bending in. It's that last joint in your big toe. These are called hallux interphalangeus. <laughs> That's Latin for bendy toes. So what should I do about it? It's well worth seeing a specialist in feet, so a podiatrist or an orthopedic surgeon. They can put special gadgets in your shoes, things that will either pull your toes straight or push them a little bit and get them right. Now, it may be that when you're older, you actually need an operation to fix it, but it isn't going to cause you problems through your whole life, but it's well worth looking into when you're young. It's a busy day for Zand. He's leaving the clinic to go out and about in the park to solve your medical mysteries. Dr Sam, why do you get wobbly legs after a scary ride? What happens is your body's releasing a hormone called adrenaline, which is meant to prepare your body to like run away from something frightening. So it makes your heart beat faster, it makes your muscles more twitchy, and then your muscles are all ready to go, but you're not running around, you're just standing there. So they're kind of twitching and wobbling and trembling, and that's, that's where that feeling comes from. Why, when you're on a really fast roller coaster, does your face go like this? Nice face, Joe. When you're on the ride, you know how you feel heavy, like your head feels very... It's hard to move your head, it's hard to lift your arms. You're effectively getting what's called G-force pulling on your face. As you're going around a corner accelerating, you've got lots of times the force of gravity pulling on you. What that means is it pulls the skin on your face, the muscles on your face back, so it starts to do that, change the shape of your face. Back at the Alchmobile, there's a new case in the waiting room. Next patient, please. And it's eight-year-old Anissa with a story about her skin. I got some different colour patches of skin on some parts of my body. What's the diagnosis, Doc? Sounds to me like a case of I've got different coloured patches of skin on different parts of my body-itis. <laughs> Sounds right to me. What we're looking at is completely normal skin that's just lost its colour. And what I think you've got is a problem called vitiligo. Vitiligo means that the cells that normally make skin dark using a chemical called melanin just aren't working anymore. They've either died or they're just not making that chemical anymore, and so those bits of skin are lighter. We don't really know all the reasons why it happens, but the good news is it's not dangerous, it's not going to do you any harm, it's just a bit noticeable around your eyes. What can I do about it? A lot of people respond to either light therapy on the patches or to laser therapy. It may well be that your doctors can help you treat it. Thank you for having me. Anissa, thank you very much for coming in today. Job done. Clinic closed. Ouch. Earlier, we saw Iman with that mystery rash. Let's see how he's getting on. Back in Sheffield, Iman has spent the night in hospital after coming in with a mystery illness. He'd been at school in his art class when all of a sudden he'd looked down to see his hands were swelling up and a spreading rash. After being diagnosed with HSP where your blood vessels become inflamed, he's been receiving pain medication to treat his sore and swollen joints. How's he feeling today? Well, a lot better than yesterday. I think I might be able to stand up but not yet walk. Well, it's a step in the right direction. Well, he's not stepping quite yet, Zand, because just as things are looking up, there's been a new development. Someone at Iman's school might have meningitis, which is contagious. Because of this, consultant Judith Gilchrist is on the case. I think, although it's 90% sure it's HSP, I think there's a small chance we're dealing with meningitis because that rash that can look like that as well. Also, Iman's GP gave him antibiotics a few days ago, which can make meningitis look like HSP. He's actually had a couple of days of antibiotics already, um, and there's been a contact with a possible contact with a meningitis at school. Um, we may be dealing with a partially treated meningococcal infection. 
So basically he needs to stop in for at least another two days and we're going to put a drip in to the back of his hand, we'll take some more blood tests and we'll start him on some intravenous antibiotics. Once Simon's handed over some of the red stuff, it's off to the lab for testing. But it'll take 48 hours to get the results. In the meantime, Iman just has to wait. Two days later, and our patient seems to be on the mend. A lot better now. I could walk. I can reach the laboratory right now. My legs still hurt, but I can still reach it. He might feel better, but he still has to get the results from his blood test. And they're in. I've got some good news for you. Your blood test is a negative. So you can go home. It's great news. Iman's blood tests show he doesn't have meningitis. I'm so pleased. Finally, I'm going home. Yes. So it is HSP after all, which will clear up all by itself in a few weeks. At least for now, he's got a spring back in his step. Bye. Bye.